<clears throat> what is up guys and welcome to week 5 of of course the TBU and the Scandinavian Stavlins and I'm going to do a quick team analysis on screen we're not going to have a team analysis upload due to we being very late the reason for the late upload here is because me and my opponents haven't been able to definitely schedule the game mainly because it's a busy man I'm a busy man and we're 10 hours apart that isn't really that helpful so we finally got able to actually have the battle today on Saturday so the team analysis doesn't necessarily make sense we're gonna go over the least uh, my, my team process basically and what I was facing now looking over his team here he's bringing exactly what I was thinking he has a few other Pokemon but only the one that makes sense outside of these six are Among Us which is uh, something he was wearing so I'm gonna tell you guys a bit about that before I actually going into overarching theme uh, because my team is as followed Stoutland, a banded version with uh, Sleep Talk, Facade, and Return. Clearly made for the Among Us. Clearly made for trying to utilize a banded version, but with Facade in mind. And also, if we get poisoned like that, Stoutly can kind of step it up. Uh, can easily spam here because he didn't uh, unbench his Chandelure, which was also a Pokemon that he could do very well against me. So, not being able to deal with that is super, super great, mainly because normal spamming is something he doesn't necessarily deal with all that well the second set here is the max defensive blastoise which enough creep to out creep his uh, uh, possible defensive uh, mandibus we have the scald ice beam and earthquake with rapid spin so we are completely walled out by the but at the same time Glycopod is, uh, no matter what situation, is a threat against Blastoise, or Blastoise are not meant to stand against it, so it made no sense of actually bringing something like Toxic for a filler move, just hoping for the best. If Glycopod comes in, I kind of have to get out, clearly. Psyguard, uh, um, and this was, um, Psyguard got a little bit help with, with a guy named Ikisprite, who is uh, pretty much a co-coach for this team, really. Uh, it helps me a lot, I do value his opinion quite a lot. And uh, he definitely had a Dragon Dance set in mind with Substitute and uh, Thousand Arrows and Extreme Speed. Basically, depending on the team, uh, setting up Hazard would be a main priority and then basically sweep with Saigar, which felt rather easy to do with this matchup in mind. Um, granted that, of course, Mamu, Mandibus, and Goliath parts out of the way. Goliath Sport, for example, is going to definitely take a lot of pressure from uh, Saigar, so. I can only actually set up when Psy or with, uh, with Goliath Spot out of the way. Um, but I thought that it shouldn't have a big issue. It's really it's easy to set up, it's easy to go for, of course, you know, the substitutes very I think it's the likes of Muck and definitely if I get the Kurtz, but of course the follow-up Pokemon being Frostlass. Frostlass' main objective for this matchup is actually to stack hazards. Uh, and go for Will O Wisp against the Muck. Frostless will bait Muck nine times out of ten. There is no way around it, so getting that thing burned is going to be very, very crucial. Uh, but outside of that, stacking with spikes is something that my opponent isn't dealing too well with. Most of the team is grounded. And the only thing that can, of course, get it out of the way is Manibus, so I need to keep myself wary. Though one thing that's very, very good is that Ice Moon, of course, is super effective towards Manibus, and Manibus cannot come in easily towards it. So that's something I'm definitely going to be keeping in mind. Uh, boss hole, probably my only real check to his offensive uh, nature of his team. That is, of course, both uh, Goliath of Pod, Mammoth Swan, and Diggersby. They're all posing an immense amount of pressure against my team. Boss hole is the only Pokemon here available to take that. I am fearing a C move Diggersby with Bounce. I, I'm pretty sure that could make it. Uh, but aside of that, boss hole is probably the only thing that can naturally come in on Glycopod. Glycopod is an uh, immense threat here against my team, mainly because it does so much damage in such a short amount of time. Uh, so even a Liquidation can actually do around 50% if I am unlucky, depending on the set. So I need to keep that in mind, and Boss Hole need to be healthy throughout this match, or I basically lose. Same thing with the next Pokemon Excadrill. Uh, it's a left doors variant with basically no attack investment. It's a defensive Excadrill. Uh, main issue here or main objective is to check Tabu Koko because I can't switch into Tabu Koko. I have no Pokemon on my roster that deal with Tabu Koko well. Excadrill is the only one and that's not a good option when it is so frail. But like I said, my only option of this matchup was bringing Excadrill with a defensive role, and it might actually come back to bite him in the ass, depending on what I was bringing, because Among Us was one of those Pokemon that could check it well, so not seeing it helped me a bit more relaxed, I'm not gonna deny that. 
Outside of that, the extra was supposed to have Stealth Rocks for this matchup, able to set up against Tabu Koko, but uh, I forgot to change that, so you kind of um, keep that in mind as this battle goes on. It definitely is an issue here, because his team is not weak to it, but definitely helps out uh, with those extra residual damage. Uh, so we have Sword Stance over Stealth Rocks, Earthquake, Rock Slide, and Iron Head. And uh, we're basically invested enough to outspeed uh, Jolly Mammoth Swine, and should be able to outspeed everything he's seen outside of a type of Coco. Um, and that basically is. x is super, super weird for this kind of matchup. Its main role, as stated, is to deal with the type of Coco, which was going to make it for his roster no matter what. Uh, and if I look at my opponent's team, or it's gonna just from the get go, I kind of felt that. No, he's gonna leave with Tabu Koku or Mammoth Swine getting up hazard because you see that the only spinners I possibly could have is Zero Course Blast was Race Girl, but none of them do well against Mammoth Swine, at least not that well. So it felt weird to bring in Blast Dogs in case he started with Tabu Koku because that would just annihilate me. And I don't kind of want to throw in Excadrill too early in the matchup because it's just a big issue for me of actually getting residual damage onto my, of course, Excadrill early on in the game. So main focus here was actually starting with Stoutland, hoping that either is Tabu Koku or Mammoth Swine. If it is Mammoth Swine, then I can actually throw in, of course, a banded <laughs> return. I'm gonna go for a banded return no matter what matchup, basically go for maximizing damage early on and just keep on pressuring. And uh, yeah, the only thing I really doesn't hope we start off with is Muck, because I know it can soak ahead, it's gonna be probably super annoying overall, and that's something I do not like. So yeah, anyway, with all this my life, let's of course go into the match. So from the get-go, we do not get an ideal situation here. We are going up against a Mandibus. And the thing is here, I could predict Toxic, and that is what I do. So I will not throw in my Blast Toys. I'll go directly for Return, scouting whether how defensive this Pokemon really is. And it's definitely max defense. It's I'm not peaking over 50%, and it does knock off my Choice Band. Though luckily, due to Intimidation, it is, of course, of a Whittle Down area. But at the same time, he will roost this off. Knowing that he will most likely roost here, I am much better off going to, of course, Rodot or, of course, my Mega Blastoise, basically forcing him out. I know that it's extremely likely that he could bring in Goliath's Potry on at it, so I'm just gonna go for a Scald, baiting for a burn, because it just made too much sense, and burn is basically my best play here. Uh, it's very likely could have U turn and try to scout me out. Actually, I do outspeed. Which is good, because that means a bus will outspeed this thing too, and we do connect to Burn. Sadly, it is on the wrong Mon. The Burn do not help me too much with, of course, the Mana Bus. Since it is leftovers, it can kind of keep itself afloat with that in mind. So Goliath's Bar get a free switch in here, and I need to directly go into Bus Hole. The main reason for that is that even if it goes to regular for Liquidation, and feeling that's very a possibility, uh, I can still kind of will this thing out and stall it out of anything. So luckily, um, he doesn't do too much damage onto me, and that's a very, very good thing, as uh, I can easily just go for an attack move here. I do believe I actually go for a Leech Life directly, or yeah, I try to do as much damage as possible, as it's going to do an immense amount of damage, and knowing that this Pokemon is burned means that his, and his max defense, means that his Braver will do less than 50%, so I am free here to try to go for an Ice Punch. I was kind of hoping it would KO, it is definitely a roll, and it's a roll that is around 60% for me of KOing from this range. So I basically took a gamble and hoping, really, really hoping that it was going to be enough. Sadly, it isn't. It isn't even close. We got a really bad roll here, as luckily for me, he does go for U turn, actually preserving my bus hole even further. And Gore Heart really stands tall as Tapu Koko comes in. And as I said before here, Excrill is my only switching towards this, and Wild Charge uh, is not a KO, luckily, but one thing that really is a KO is a Thunderbolt from this thing, and it can learn Brave Root, so I have a lot of things to watch out when it comes to Gore Heart. It cannot stay in versus this Pokemon, as luckily for me, my opponent, or not luckily, he gets momentum, it goes for a U-turn, but that U-turn damage tells me that it has to be a Bandit version, because that did way too much. As the Goliathopod comes in again, Goliathopod has Aqua Jet, it has the Liquidation. Uh, Rock Slide will not force an Emerge Exit towards this, so I need to switch out. And uh, here's where I don't know, Stealth Rock, which only made this situation even worse. As I switch in Gore Heart, and here comes the Liquidation. And the Liquidation doesn't do 50%, luckily, but it is up there. It is just the worst kind of move to try to soak. As I'm gonna go for Roost, hoping he switches out. 
uh, he actually stays in here, so I'm getting, you know, that kind of situation where I'm just like, oh shit, you know, what if I get a defense drop here? This could definitely backfire. Liquidation should, or my leech life should do around 30%, since the damage output is so high, it is most certainly a more offensive version of Goliath's power, which means the leech life should give me a good amount of health back, as it does. That's around a 30% hit as predicted. But, as followed, the liquidation will do so much damage that I can't risk it one more time. I need to roost here. Luckily, I haven't gotten a defense drop yet. And as long as that isn't happening, Gorhot should do well and keep itself rather well afloat here. As he's gonna actually switch out and actually go for mana, but trying to sack it. So I'm kinda glad I didn't go for a leech left there, forcing, of course, uh, his uh, emerge exit already. I was kinda feeling that it will. It was, would be a golden opportunity for him of actually switching mana bus here, trying to uh, trying to sack it and uh, ensure that I get at least some amount of HP back <laughs> for the situation. As I'm just gonna KO mana bus, there is just no way of me of actually trying to do another type of play here because if you roost, I get an issue which I almost actually cancel already having mana bus out of the way. So the first Pokemon fall, it took 12 turns to get here, which is definitely unusual for me, mainly because. I am much, much for that uh, KOing something before five turns. It's, um, it's my meta, it's my motto. As I see Tabu Cocos, and then I am now sure that this thing has Braybird, and that the Beast Boost attack really just started to stress him out. And uh, I just I can't take a risk on this. I could potentially survive that Braybird, but since we know already from the damage that was banded, that is now very, very unlikely as uh, he goes directly for the Braver. I was like, all right, I'm gonna be in a good amount of health after this anyway, as he scores a crit on me, and that really, really pushes the boundaries of what I can take. I can now not take a Braver whatsoever, and I am forced here to switch into Stoutland, basically forcing its HP down. It's my best play from this kind of environment, and the thing is here, Stoutland do not take these hits really that well either, and uh, without the band, I am not a threatening force anymore as um, the Braver, of course, will connect, but uh, it doesn't do too much, and I'm pretty sure it will switch out here, because Return will just pop him. So I was predicting, of course, his uh, Muck to come in here, trying to soak a hit, now that, of course, I'm no longer bulky. Sadly, Goliath's Ward comes in, and I actually, like I said, I'm switching Excredible of all the things. Well, I do get some Leftovers recovered, which is great, because I kind of need it now, because I can't no longer switch into, of course, a Braver, which is super, super annoying, because that means I tried to stall a few turns out just to get a left of recovery to try to take another one of those Brave Birds. Even at that, I'm still too key to kill it from this kind of range. So, um, anyway, switching to Goal Heart, he goes directly for an Aqua Jet. That's quite alright, and actually does a decent amount of damage to me. I mean, I am somewhat defensive here, I'm close to max HP, and that just pushes the boundaries of what Bustle really can be, as I do go directly there for at least life force in the emergency exit. And um, I know Tabu Coco will come in yet again, and I will now be in a good amount of HP because, of course, I thought I should be in a much, much better position when I go to Leech Life this time, and that he went for, of course, Aqua Jet over Liquidation. So Tabu Coco comes in, and um, I mean, at this point, I mean, there is no. Uh, he has to yet again go for Braver, and it, just, it makes no sense for him not to. So I'm gonna switch out and I'm gonna actually sack off my Southland here. He's done his job. If anything, if I can push his, of course, his HP down, I can actually bring in extra real yet again. As he goes for a U-turn. And uh, we actually are <laughs> taking that almost okay as Mammoth Swine comes in. Now, here's the thing. Against Mammoth Swine, I rather try to get the damage and see him go for Stealth Rocks. He goes for Ice Shard. That's ex extremely lucky for me, I should say. Because, if anything, there is a very, very hard switch to make there. But, I have a big, big opening. And that is, of course, I can freely go for a... Will always that he shows me Ice Shard means that I can most certainly predict him not being scoffed. Uh, as I do miss the Will Wisp, it's unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world because we do get another chance of actually doing it. As uh, he's actually going to go for a knockoff here, we do have the Cobra Berry, which means that we will not be KO'd here. Um, and I can easily now go for a layer of spikes. Now, the issue with, of course, missing the Will Wisp is that I don't get three layers of spikes, which is something I really, really needed. To actually potentially sweep with my Psyguard from this kind of environment. But we get Mug, of course, Will down as he'll actually go for Pursuit, which was something I felt was really like that he would be bringing. And granted, Knockoff wouldn't kill me for this range, I'm guaranteed to get two layer of spikes here anyway. As uh, we're gonna, of course, sack off uh, <laughs> my Frostlass here. The thing is here, 
it's kind of done its job already. It got the relevance thing burned. And I can now go for a sweep, basically, with Saigar because we're now in an area where Muck cannot um, knock us out of a substitute that we could potentially actually start setting up here. As um, we're gonna bring, of course, the Jörgmanger, uh, Jörgmanger, <laughs> uh, basically the Serpent of Valhalla. That's uh, that's the Swedish name for it, if you guys are wondering. So anyway, he's switching to this Glycopod, and it was basically a very, very tough situation for me. Trying to decide whether I wanted to be behind a sub or not against his uh, man Mammoth Swine. I realized that it was much better of me trying to be behind a sub against the Mammoth because at least then that meant that I could go for 2,000 arrows and he's forced to go for an Ice Shard at least once to be able to try to KO me. So knowing that and knowing that I go for Ice Shard against me, I now know it was a gold opportunity to just go for 1,000 arrows and potentially actually kill him because I am now really, really healthy. I can easily take an Ice Shard one more time outside of the substitute and potential sash is broken with of course the spikes in mind as he doesn't go for an ice shard and here's where I slowly slowly start realizing oh my god he, he has icicle spear of course he has the icicle spear as that of course will first of all break my sub which is just wondrous next hit to connect almost kills me and he gets a third hit, which will just annihilate me. So, yeah, that did not turn out as well as I hoped. Though, I have one great opportunity here, and that is that I know that, it, like I said, it's not a Scarf variant, which means I can easily go for an Earthquake here. I can hurt everything in his team without necessarily need to worry about that and get a leftover recovery, as he will slack off the Mammoth Swine, which is great. The Mammoth Swine is an issue, no matter what. It is the biggest issue ever. <laughs> so he's actually gonna switch in his type of Koku here, and I felt we already know that you're potentially that you are banded, and quite honestly, I will not make any strange play here. I will just go for Earthquake. I just wanna see what you lock yourself into and then switch out freely. As luckily for me he does go for U-turn. Granted, Braver would not have KO from this area due to me actually eventually actually got over those 80 HP. So that was really, really good. That was a good opportunity for me just standing, just existing in that environment, really. Uh, so I'm going to go directly for the earthquake and KO in Muck, which clearly didn't do much more than just setting up a series of events in motion, which just didn't lead to nowhere, with Sagar being, of course, easily KO'd by the Mammo. Kind of kinda boring, kind of <laughs> kinda underwhelming. As Digger Speed comes in, I'm feeling that I can't risk anything here. If he has Sea Bounce, and so be it. I'm just going to go for Earthquake. As we do find out that it's not Scarfed at least, which is great, but Earthquake is not a KO because I am defensive, but he goes for return, and uh, yeah, he went for return, and that's a bandit return, actually. Uh, I was so sure here comes the life for version with re return and anything like that, or like I said, the sea bounce. So I was feeling the Earthquake coming, but showing me that it's bandit means that we actually can maneuver around this Diggersby, and quite honestly, it feels great, because I am now in an environment where I can actually win. As uh, so the Koku comes in, and as stated, I was pretty sure this thing was banded, but I didn't want to take any risk in case I overlooked something, and he just going to roost in my face. If we'd done that, then you know we have a much much tougher situation ahead of us. So I went for a quick, basically second it, but I know, I know it's banded, but I just I couldn't risk it. I just I, I really felt so stressed out trying to preserve some kind of. Uh, um, differential only to be flattened by this type of Coco if that were the case. So anyway, he's gonna wrap it up with a Braver, we're gonna kill himself, there's really nothing to it, and we are gonna win this match 2-0. So to Dokes and of course Denemil, Dene, thank you so much for the battle and a very, very good job to you, buddy. So yeah, a bit of the other thoughts here, because I really have to at least try to <laughs> explain myself, but also at the same time, I do believe my opponent kind of choked the last part of the battle, uh, that's not gonna go away. If anything, I do believe if my opponent just went straight on for an earthquake uh, or had a different set of digger speed, this game would have turned a lot, lot differently. And um, I think had it gone for an earthquake there, um, even if you know the recall on the, um, the type of Coco would kill him, it still would have reduced the recoil the um, situation quite a lot. Um, <clears throat> that said, I really, really enjoyed this game. I really like what those decided to bring against me here. I really like the lines of pond being just such an immense threat really, I definitely was fearing this Pokemon throughout the matchup. Even though I KO it effortlessly there at, at the end, it really took some time for me of getting there and quite honestly it was the spikes doing that work, nothing else. It was a residual damage that took out of the not necessarily myself. 
and that is a testament to how great this Pokemon really is. If you, you know you have the Hassle Control, you can force out switches. He losing mana was early, yeah, that is a very very good thing happening in my favor. But at the same time, had to go for Brave Bird versus, of course, my boss hole. My boss hole may or may not actually been able to deal with the Goliath but that well. So a few chokes here and there, and you know that's the game we play in the end. I'm willing to definitely say that Dogs played a very very good overall match. It misses a few plays, but at the same time I pretty much choke against it with Saigar. What the hell just happened? Of course I had Icicle Spear, right? Uh, but anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this battle and the Dogs. Thank you so much for this battle, and I'll see you guys next week. Until then, of course, take care. Bye.